it down here, you can see that you have the kidney, it's retroperitoneal. This part of the kidney is the helis or the hilus. You can see it has pericapsular fat trying to support it. We have the adrenal gland. We have uh, the renal veins and arteries. We can see the ureter coming down, leaving the pelvis of the kidney. If you look at the kidney, you can see you have a cortex, you have a capsule, you have a medulla, you have a pelvis, and the ureter leaves the pelvis and passes down to behind the bladder. If we look at the bladder, you can see that the uh, ureter is entering, so there are two points where it enters and one where it leaves. That smooth surface is the trigon. The roughened surface would be the rugae. The urethra leaves, in this case it's the male, so it's going through the prostate, and you can see there's the prostatic urethra. Since this is the male, you can see the vas deferens coming behind, join in the seminal vesicle. There's a ureter, which would be the same in the male and the female. On the front of the bladder, where well, again you can see the rugae, but here you have what is left of that duct that connected to the umbilicus, it's now called the uracus. All right, so there you've got, remember before the blood vessels, there's the arcuate arteries and veins, mm -hmm. the interlobulars or radiates if you wish, the afferent arterial, the efferent arterial, uh, and of course down here the vasa recta, the peritubular capillaries. In terms of the flow, we have the renal corpuscle. Inside is the glomerulus and outside is Bowman's capsule. It flows into the proximal convoluted tube, which in this one is the more abundant and is pink here. It then flows down the descending limb of Henley, which you can see has a thin segment. The hairpin of the loop of Henley here. It then has the ascending limb of Henley, the ascending limb of Henley becomes the distal convoluted tube, the distal convoluted tube becomes a collecting duct, becomes a papillary duct. That's good. Uh, if you want to name the vessels though, you can see renal vein, renal artery. The renal artery forms segments. There is a ureter leaving. All right, there is the pelvic area. There's some minor calyxes. Uh, the pyramid flows into it, and these then join to form major galaxies, so it's better on this. So here's your hilus, there's your renal arteries and veins, form the segmental arteries, interloba, loba, arcuates, radiates, and the veins can have the same name, or you can leave out segmental and interloba. Radiate arteries are some t and interloba arteries are the same. We have the cortical area, we have the capsule, we have the medulla. The medulla is divided into pyramids and columns. The arteries are passing up to the base of the pyramid via the columns. The um, pyramids are there for a base and, and a apical portion which is a papilla and that drains into a minor calyx or calyx if you wish. They become major calyxes or calyxes and then they become the pelvis itself, and then the ureter. Uh, here is just a close-up of this, where you can see the afferent arterial going to the glomerulus. Here is leaving and becoming peritubular capillaries. All right, and uh, here the same peritubular capillaries are continuing down as peritubular capillaries and an open net called a vasa recta. Uh, we can see we have the proximal convoluted tube, the descending limb of Henley, the ascending limb of Henley, the distal tube, the collecting duct, the papillary duct. These are cortical, these are medullary or juxtamedullary nephron. Because they go all down into Deeper the... Deeper into the medulla. Okay. Right. All right. So there's your afferent arterial, there's your efferent arterial, mm -hmm. there's your distal tube, there's your proximal tube, there's Bowman's capsule. So this is a glomerulus, this is a glomerulus wrapped by podocytes. So these are the podocytes with the podocyte slits. These are the juxtaglomerular cells around the afferent arterial. Mm -hmm. This side of the distal tube would be the macula densa. These two together would be called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So these are the juxtaglomerular cells, the macula densa, the juxtaglomerular apparatus when you put the two together.